let's start with some introductions so we can go to the next slide please guys so this is me so we've got three of us on this call here today on this webinar so some of you may know of me already from the uh, other webinars that we've run and I'll just do a recap on that in a moment so I'm a, I am work with Sitecore as a digital marketing consultant helping organizations understand the art of the possible in terms of what digital marketing can do in terms of the higher education market and, and to make those um, possibilities a reality and also I am an associate lecturer at Oxford Brookes University teaching masters um, students on would you believe digital marketing um, in fact I've done five lectures in the last few weeks so mainly around marketing analytics and stuff um, so that's what I do um, Adam would you like to introduce yourself yeah sure so um, I'm, I'm a university graduate myself and since I graduated I, I joined EDGESERV I've been here for uh, nine years now um, and during those nine years I've been a cycle developer and led um, development on a number of large projects and worked with a number of different universities with uh, Sitecore. That's a cool picture of you Adam, where are you? Where's that picture taken? <laughs> that's, um, that's at Ayers Rock in Australia, yeah, that's, that's not today. Um, yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, this is not where you're calling from, yeah. Yeah. And, and this is a live picture from Steve. I can see having a cup of tea. This is him <laughs> as, as, as we yeah. speak. Is that right, Steve? That's right. Yeah. Well, this isn't so glamorous. This is me in cheddar in the tea room. So it's not. And a few years ago, I was a little bit younger, more fresh-faced. But uh, yeah, I'm Steve Newstar. I'm a student architect at Um I have um, also been working for with Cycle about five years now. Um, led on some projects. Um, a recent one for uh, the, the Leicester University, for example, um, so I've got some good experience in higher education, um, and that's me, yeah. All right, so this, uh, if we can just go on to the next slide, and then I'll hand over to Adam. Um, so this, this, this webinar is due to last about 45, to, um, 45 minutes to an hour, um, and you get an opportunity to ask, please do ask questions, and we'll stop at various points we get lots of questions in and endeavor to answer some of them as we go through but if the ones that we don't answer as we go through the webinar today we will definitely answer at the end of the webinar and of course you've got an opportunity to continue to have that dialogue with edu and myself asking us questions via email or phone call or whatever channel you prefer to use um, and this is the last in a series of webinars that we've been running. So um, the first three, actually, it's been me that's been doing all the hard work, I have to say, but it won't be me today. It's mainly Adam who will be doing the demo. And uh, you may recall those who've been uh, participating in previous webinars that uh, we've been talking really about how digital marketing communications can help drive the performance and productivity of uh, the higher education market, specifically uh, universities. So we, we picked on particular topics like um, how you can use digital marketing during that very intense period of acquiring students during that clearing process because you've got a short window to really perform really well and uh, having an agile digital marketing platform that personalizes content to individuals uh, is a great way of capturing those students and stop um, them going off elsewhere. And then the second one was clearly about um, focusing on maintaining a high level of engagement with postgraduates and attracting those students. And then the third one, as it says there, was principally around attracting perhaps those high value students and you know engaging with people according to their cultures and their languages and the particular areas of um, study that they're interested in. So having you know gone through from one to three, we're now on the fourth webinar, which is really showing showing you an example of uh, a student experience platform and how it actually works. Um, so at this point, um, please do feel free to, continue to ask questions, type them in, we will answer them at various points. But at this point now, I shall hand you over to the illustrious Adam. Thank you very much, Paul. Okay. So today we're going to um, take a look at Sitecore in, in, in detail and get some hands on with the platform. So we're, we're going to do a demo of the personalization capabilities of the Sitecore experience platform and, and really it's to, to, to give some examples of the opportunities this could, could pro provide to universities to deliver um, digitally re relevant content to the users to really improve their experience and really um, encourage them to um, achieve goals or convert and sign up for various things on your website. Okay, so uh, very quickly before we jump into the demonstration, I just want to talk about what we can actually learn about the users using the Cycle Experience platform. So um, 
we, there's actually things we, we do know about people, so really their digital footprint, so the, the information they bring with them when they come to the site, so that's all about their location, their referring site, um, uh, their device, campaigns, etc. And with that, within the cycle platform, we can use the rules-based personalization. So this is kind of explicit personalization based on their digital footprint and the information they, they bring along when they first visit the site. We also then, we can actually listen to the people and, and engage when they engage with us. So when they're actually going through the site, they'll then be exhibiting sort of behaviors, they'll be viewing particular types of content, they'll be triggering various goals and things like that across the site. And we start to build up a, a profile of that particular person as they're, they're journeying through our, our website. And then what we can actually use in the Cycle platform is what's called predictive personalization. It's the kind of the explicit, uh, I'm sorry, the implicit information we can build up about the person as they go through the site and we can then personalize based on that. And then on top of that, um, we can actually capture information they specifically tell us. So you may have a forum on your website that you build with Cycle web forms for marketers and then you could you could create forms with various fields like name, age, etc. All that information that they submit into that form, you can then um, store that into the XDB within Sitecore. And then once you've got that information, really you can do personalization based on that. So you can maybe call up that data to maybe present in a particular page, or actually you could do personalization again on, on a particular page and then show people particular content based on the information they've given you. So today we're going to look at and uh, focus on implicit personalization. So it's all it's going to be based on kind of the behaviors of the visitor on the website and, and then we'll then show you actually how as a marketer um, you can configure the, the, the personalization rules on, on your content pages, on key pages as the, the visitor comes to your site. So yeah, just very quickly, um, this is what we're going to um, demo. So it's all about delivering digitally relevant content to your users to ultimately um, give them um, useful information and also help them to maybe maybe convert, sign up. If it's a postgraduate, you may want them to you know, sign up to down or download a perspective. So we're going to give you uh, an overview of what we built is uh, a university demonstrator website. So we've, we've built a, a website in Sitecore to, to demonstrate to universities and to yourselves today. Um, we're going to actually look at a journey. So we've got an example journey of a prospective student. So we're going to run through that journey in Sitecore and see how personalization can help them on that journey. Um, then we'll look at the sort of the, how marketers can actually personalize the content on that journey. Um, and then we'll move on to um, how you can actually test that per those personalization rules. So you, that you can put personalization across your site, but really how do you test um, at, or impersonate someone so you can test what the, the page will actually look like for them. And then we'll then show you um, sort of a lower level how you create those profiles and sort of tag content so that you're building up that picture of the person as they're going through the website. So right now we're going to jump straight into the demonstration and uh, hopefully we're going to have some luck on our side today because we're, uh, we're doing a live demonstration. So, okay. Right. So I'm going to jump onto our demo site. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to check that I've cleared all the cookies. Um, so I'm a completely unique visitor to the website. Okay. So this is the uh, the Edge of University Demonstrator website. So our, our team here, we we built this in um, like a, a one week sprint. So we've put this together very quickly in about five days, and it's actually been built um, using a, a framework called um, Cycle Habitat. So this is a um, framework that's been driven by the community and is open source. You can download from GitHub. Um, we were actually building our own framework and um, we actually then came across Habitat fairly recently because um, I think it sort of was launched in December, January and we just feel it's a great framework so we're going to move to, to using this framework now and start contributing and into the development of this and it, it's just really flexible and it gives you a great foundation to build a website on and we found that as we're building this demonstrator it's really quick to, to build a good demonstration site, so we've, we've very quickly put together what, uh, what is uh, an example um, uh, university website. So as I was saying, this we're actually going to be demonstrating um, a journey for a prospective university student. So at the moment I'm a unique visitor coming to the website, so I can see sort of this home rotator, 
I've got a few bit, bits of information or uh, around qualifications, exploring faculties and study options, etc. And then I've got a few other various components at the bottom. So as, as this visitor to the site, I can see here I've got this sort of uh, call to action to explore the courses. So what I'm actually going to do as um, the visitor, as a sort of prospective student, I'm going to actually go and check out the latest courses. So on the search page, I've got all the courses we've got um, within the website. Um, and then I'm actually, what I'm really interested in is, I'm, in, I'm interested in computer science. So I'm going to narrow down my search results based on this facet here, computer science. What I'm then going to do, I, I think actually I'm, I'm quite interested in um, games design and development. And then I'm going to click on that course. So I'm just going to I come through to the course page. We've got all the key facts and information on the right-hand side around that course um, to do with sort of the, the study duration, um, whether it's a remote course and the particular subject or school it's related to. We've got all the information about the course, the course details, the years, etc., entry requirements, fees. Again, this is just all Lorem Ipsum content, but this is this will all be configurable in the, this platform. I just think, oh, that's not quite right for me. That one. Uh, maybe I'm interested in computer coding and application development. Again, so I take a look at that course. <clears throat> and again, I, yeah, I th this looks quite good. But actually, you know, I, I was on the bus, or you know, I, I haven't actually got that much time. I'm actually going to end my session, so I'm, I'm going to go back and come back another day. So what we can actually do in this demonstrated website, and th again, this is um, a, a tool that's available on the Cycle Habitat platform. So I can actually simulate the ending of that um, that current visit. So if I click this button. What it actually does is it it, it ends the journey and then flushes all of that data that you've captured for that person in that session out to the XDB. So what I can actually do is I can actually close my browser and I can start a new visit to the website. So can I jump back in? So this is effectively someone coming on another day or another visit, I suppose. Yeah, that's right. So it could be another day. Yeah, exactly that. So I come back to the website again on another day, and I, I look around the home page. And actually, what we've done here is we've personalised the content based on the types of courses that the the individual was looking at. So we've we've kind of got this sort of call to action here, and it's it, it's information about the computer sciences school. So we can actually, as the user, I think actually, yeah, I was I was interested in that. I'm going to go and find out about that particular school or faculty. I come into that page and I've got information on maybe we could have a list of the courses here. Again, we could build that in and show the, the courses within the school. I've then got maybe some information on the particular lecturers, so you know, people of interest who will actually be teaching the course. All of that I think is great stuff. You know, I'm really interested in that. And then I've actually this has caught my eye on the right hand side, so I'm actually quite interested in the study options within this particular um, uh, school. So I decide to look at the study options. Again, on this page, this, we could add, add lots more content in around this, but we've got these two key study options available. So we've got full-time courses and sandwich courses. And I actually think, well, just from this piece of text here, I think a sandwich course could be of interest to me. So I'm actually going to read some more about that. So then I come through to a course page, or sorry, a page that explains you know, what, what sandwich courses are, why they're valuable to um, <clears throat> students who actually take these courses and how it can help them taking that step or that first step in their career. So I read all of that information and I guess at this point, you know, I'm, I'm interested in a computer science degree and maybe I'm feeling, you know, sandwich, a sandwich course could be right for me. So I then maybe then I go back to the home page. And as soon as we come back to the home page, it might be a bit cheesy, this message, but um, yeah, we've got this call to action here about sandwich courses. So it says mm, sandwiches, and then we can actually got a link here, which maybe um, takes you through to uh, a search page which lists all the sandwich courses. If I actually, and what I can do here is, again, I could end the session and flush all the data. I might do that actually. I'll do that. So I could, you know, I, I decided I'm interested in sandwich courses, um, and I, I like computer science, and then I come back to the home page. So yeah, I could explore the sandwich courses, but actually we've got this call to action here now on the right-hand side. So we've got a rule here that based because I'm interested in computer science in the sandwich course, I can actually say, hey, would, would this person be interested in a computing for real-time systems degree with a sandwich option? And I can actually go, right, I'm going to check this out and see if, I'm, if this is right for me. 
So then I can actually come onto the course page, read all the information in the introduction about that. Um, and this actually was a course that I did at um, UE University, so uh, yes, yeah, it's um, particularly relevant to me and very interesting. So yeah, I read all the course information as this visitor, and I think, right, okay, this looks great. I'm actually going to maybe apply or express my interest, and we've got this call to action on the right-hand side. Again, I think in a future webinar, we're, we're planning to maybe run a series of webinars. So I think we might, in a, a follow-up, talk about the sort of um, AB and multivariate testing and how you can use that to really um, test the content and make sure you, you're optimizing the content on your site. But really, we've got this call to action, so I've decided to apply or register my interest. We've got, so we come to the apply page where you can put in your details. It might be at this point, actually, you know, I, I might be interested in fees, so maybe just got this information here on the right just to make sure that at this point here, so we, I don't go off somewhere else and get distracted, I'm actually, you know, I'm finding out, so we've got some key questions and answers there. So then I decide, okay, right, I'm going to um, I'm going to register my interest in this. So I'm going to complete the form. And then I submit the form. Okay, so then that that's been submitted off again. We could make this a bit more um uh, user friendly this thank you message, but, but we've confirmed that that form's been submitted. I then so I submit the form, register my interest, and now I think right, I'm going to go off and look around the site a bit more find out some more information and what we've actually done because this I've actually um, could submitted the form we've then triggered a goal and that goal is now personalizing the content on the home page and we can actually say okay have you applied for a course right we've got some information that's going to help you on your next steps after expressing your interest and we've got this prospective students guide and then we've got this page where you know we, we can really help them and you know on their journey to becoming a, a student at maybe at your university so that's a, a journey where we've gone through. We've we didn't know anything about the user. We've um, we kind of learned about the the course they were interested in. That they were interested maybe in a sandwich. We've personalised the content. We've drawn them into a particular relevant um, degree or course based on um, using a call to action. And then we've actually got them to complete a form on the website and then um, and trigger a, a goal on the site. So we're actually now going to jump in to the back end and show how, how we've actually been able to construct that, that journey and that profiling in the back end. So um, I'm just going to jump into Sycor here. So <clears throat> this is the, uh, the Sycor login screen. Um, so I'm just going to log in as administrator so I've got, um, I can jump in between all the various features um, that your marketers might use. And this is the, um, the new Sitecore Experience Platform dashboard. So this was released with Sitecore version 8. We're now currently on Sitecore 8.1. As you can see on this dashboard, it's very friendly for the, uh, the users or your marketers or your content editors and allows people to jump in fairly or very quickly into the features they need to use. And what you can actually do is you can maybe um, restrict the access or only provide them access to the, the features they need. So if you're a marketer, maybe we only give them access to the marketing control panel, pathline analyzer, all these types, all these things on the left-hand side here. Whereas if it was maybe just a content editor or an author, maybe you only give them access to sort of the content editor and the experience editor or the workbox um, features. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to go in as, as a marketer and we're going to go into the what's called the experience editor. So we're going to click on that. And what we should see, okay, so this is the Cycle Experience Editor um, view and this allows us to um, edit the content as it looks on the page. So in the past, you may have used um, the content editor view or the field view, fairly similar with many other CMSs, but this is, really this is why, why Sitecore is a leading platform or a leading experience platform is you're essentially editing in line within the page and also you can do all of your personalization here. And um, something we definitely advise when you're you're implementing your site within Sitecore, as you you entirely componentize the whole of your site, so you can see as I'm as I'm moving around and clicking on various areas, all of these things are components, and each component you can then customize the content within that. Again, here this is a component; these are all components within the page. Again, here all components; the whole page is componentized, and you really need to ensure that 
whenever you're implementing a site, you're, you're componentizing it and making it flexible as well. So we can actually um, add in sort of different layers. I might do that now very quickly. I can show you. So I click component and add component here. So I can add in a section. So if I add a section, we can then pick say different columns and layouts so then I could actually say right I want a three column layout and it's going to be this six by three by three layout so then it drops that in and then you've got this these flexible areas where you can actually then start to drop components into the page um, so we could then maybe put a teaser in etc so fairly we could drop these types of components in that we have here below um, I'm just going to reset the changes that I've made um, and then show you actually how we configure the personalization within these components on the page. So these components here, we've um, we, we these have been personalized. So first of all, we this was the first spot that was personalized. So when I was going on the journey or going through the journey, I went to look at some courses and it, it jumped from um, Explorer facilities to the computer science um, or at schools call to action to take me through to find out more information about that. So Whenever you click on a component, you get this sort of pop-up that appears, and this gives you the ability to then personalize that component. So if I jump into the, uh, pers the configuration for the personalization, we can see here we've got all of these personalized ru personalization rules or conditions set up. So the one that was triggered when I first went through the website and looked at the computer science degrees were, was this computer science condition. What this actually did was we added in a condition here. So again, within Cycle, if you click Edit, you've got all of these personalization rules. Um, I've, I've just used one today. A lot, a lot, there's many, many rules here. I think there's a, a, about 100 rules or so here. And you use these, as I was saying in the slide, you've got um, sort of explicit, so the information people bring when they come to the site, so like GOIP, so you can personalize based on someone's location, maybe if they're an international student. Um, and what I've actually done is I've picked out a rule here to do um, exp um, implicit based on the behaviors. So what I've actually done here is I've picked the conditions so whether the current visit matches the computer science pattern card um, in the subject profile. So th that's what actually triggers this condition. And then we've got this content here for computer science, which is then personalizing the, that part of the journey. So I can actually then test that condition. So What's really good and really helpful here is you can actually toggle the various conditions. So then I can toggle to see how that content actually looks within the page. And then again, what's really good is this content is pulled from the computer science page. Um, okay. And then I can change the content. Um, so that's the computer science and how that was configured. And then what we actually did is the next part of the journey was then we actually then showed them a call to action. So I can then look at the the rule for that. So we actually put a call to action for the uh, to draw them through the uh, the computer for real time systems uh, course. So again, there we've got that content. We can then change that content, and then we can actually very quickly just look at that rule. So that condition we set is based in here, and again, it's this rule here. So the condition we configured was that whether uh, the visitor matches the computer science pattern card, and then they're actually interested in a full-time sandwich course. So we then configured that. OK, so that's this is really the, the tool for the marketer, where they can add components in and drop them into various spots, and then set the personalization based on these conditions or pattern cards that get matched. What we're actually going to do now is going to, we're going to quickly jump in and show how those are actually um, configured in the, in the back end. So if I go into the marketing control panel, so this is where we build up all of these, these profiles. So this is the marketing control panel. Again, there's lots of features within here. Um, we'd like to cover these in a, some follow-up webinars, and we, we hope they'll be useful for you. Um, so that personalization that we were showing just now, it's all based on conditions and matching of pattern cards. So we've got these profile cards here, and we've got we've got profiles for various different types of characteristics that um, or behaviors someone might exhibit on the site based on the content they view. So the key ones we were looking at and personalizing on on the front end website was to do with subject. 
So we can see in here we created the subject profile and then we've got this profile key for computer science. And then what we can actually do is build, create profile cards. So profile cards are what we personalize or add to the content. So they, these get applied to the content throughout the site. So you then apply the profile, the profile card for computer science to a computer science degree. And then these are the pattern cards. So these are the things that you then use in the conditions or rules on the front end as a marketer to match. So we then match on a pattern card called computer science and then it matches on that. So we, th this is how you build up your profiles and the characteristics you want to track as a person journeys through your website. And then what you actually do is once you've created those profile cards and pattern cards, you then um, add or um, tag that onto your content through the site. So if we go into the content editor view, we can go in <coughs> and browse the courses that we've created. So these are all the example courses we created in the site. If we go down and look at the um, Computing for Real-Time Systems course, we can actually see and look at the profile cards that have actually been assigned to this. So we can see here, this is how we've assigned the profile card for computer science. And these are added by sort of going in and selecting. So we could, you know, for another course, we could go in and pick the particular profile card that's applied to this. Also, we matched on the, the full-time sandwich course um, option. So this is a particular study method. So we've also tagged this as sandwich. So when someone's navigating around the site and viewing these pages, we start to build up a profile based on these profile cards that are assigned to the content that we have here. And then marketers can then create personalization rules based on the pattern cards, which then matches these profile um, cards or information that's added to this content. Um, very quickly, so that, that was how we personalized the journey and we then had a form um, which the person then completed. And what we can actually do and we'll show you very fairly quickly, but we'll go into more detail in a future webinar, is that when that person at the end of their journey um, completed the form, we can actually enroll them into an engagement plan. So this is how you can begin to have a conversation with your visitor to your website. And you can automate and add various actions as they take that journey through the site. So it might be the, the beginning of this plan, we want to this engagement plan, we want to put them into the applied state. And then we can kind of nurture them through a journey. So we might offer them a, a place, and once they've been offered a place and that's been issued, maybe then we can we can check if you know if they've accepted their offer. And then once they've accepted their offer, we can move them to this final state. And depending on what state that person is in, we can then maybe serve up different content to them or actually send out targeted emails to those people. So what we should be able to do, so when I was going through the site, I completed the form, and hopefully, if it's all worked as expected and planned, we should see, I uh, know, maybe I didn't end the session, but we should have seen the uh, that contact in the final state. I wonder if it was because I didn't trigger the final step. Let me try and do it one more time. It's always the way in these demonstrations. You try it just before, and then... Um, it doesn't quite work in a demonstration. Okay, so I'm going to do this. Actually, Adam. Yep. Adam. Can, yep. Yeah. Just there's a question that came up. I think it's been answered on text anyway about ending yeah, sessions. Yeah, sure. I think I think somebody's got um, the wrong perception. Out there thinking that the actual user has to physically end their own sessions. You're just doing this by way of having to close it down on a on a demonstration. Isn't that right? That's yeah. That's completely right. So yeah. Um, I've just, yeah, so the user doesn't have to end their session. That just ha happens naturally as they close their browser. What I'm actually doing is just clearing out the session um, and getting that data written into the database um, immediately for the purposes of the demonstration. The user wouldn't have to do that at all. That's all handled by the, the experience platform. It's just saving a few seconds, really, in the demonstrator while the data all gets written away to a database and sort of save is there for all time on that user. Exactly that. And hopefully I can trigger here and simulate that here. I'm just ending that visit in that particular session, which writes that data back to the back to the experience database. And um fingers crossed. Whilst you're doing that, we've got another question which yeah. I know you're going to answer okay. later, which is about how how's how's all this data stored and how do we get this profile of this and these visitors, but I know you'll be coming onto that in your um, slides in a moment. So, 
perhaps we just hold fire on that. If you can wait for the person who just asked that question. Um, what was that, the person from Cranfield? Don't know. Not to worry. Okay. But you're coming to that. Anyway. You're coming to that. Yeah, so I, maybe I can very quickly show that profile um, of that person. Um, this wasn't something I planned to show in the demonstration, but we showed that profile. Again, this is something we'll, we'll cover in a, a later demonstration, but you can go into what's called the experience profile. And you can then actually see the um, a profile for that particular person um, that's been on that journey. So what we can actually see, and we should see here, is those profile cards being matched. So we can actually see, right, I, the person, so this was my journey that I had, um, actually that was earlier this morning when I, was, when I was testing and it did work first time. But we can actually see the, the profile card for that person, so how we built up that information and how that's stored in the experience database. So this is the X file or experience profile view um, within Cycle. And we can actually see um, the pattern matches here. So we can see the subject again here. We can see that that person has matched the computer science um, course. That's the best fit we found for them. If they did happen to look at other courses on that journey, these would be scored much higher um, and they might match on a particular pattern card. And then because we've got this, this card or pattern card that's been matched for that, we can personalize content not only for the session where they've um, viewed that content, but cross sessions um, as we go through. Um, and there's another question that's coming around personalization. And it's kind of how much, how much more work do you think it would be to, because you've got to add that extra content and components and the personalization, how much more work is it to personalize that and create a more flat, flat um, site? Um, so, so how difficult is it? How, I think how difficult and how much, how much more effort up front does it take? Um, yeah, so I, I we'll come on to it on some, some slides in a second as we, we kind of wrap up the demonstration, but you, you kind of need a, to have a plan. So you could jump in and start playing with this, but really need to have a strategy around it. So um, as I was showing you actually very quickly before I jump on, we can see now that that person after they completed the form has now been enrolled into this engagement plan. Um, yeah, we can see, there we go, Steve. Um, you, we can see that contact in there and then what you can then do, you can do segmentation on that person so you can pull this person out into a list and do a targeted mail shot but again we'll cover that stuff um, and on another day. But yeah, just jumping back, so all of this, so we've built up these profiles, so these are all the various characteristics you want to um, be able to track so you can personalize content on your site. So you need to kind of have a plan and to develop these. Once you've got those, you can then start to tag that onto content um, as you're going through the site. Something, um, an idea I've come up with, and something I, I think I'm gonna, gonna build a mock-up, it should be fairly quick, and I might push this back to um, the Sitecore Marketplace, so it'd be open and free, and maybe even back to Sitecore. But let's just check how I'm doing for time. Yeah, I think we're okay. So what we can actually see is when we've built up courses in Sitecore, a lot of the times you're gonna be using taxonomies to tag your courses. So if we look at the computer science uh, sorry, Compute for All Time Systems course, we're actually tagging that, that content in here and then you can then pick in various different tags and those tags are then shared across your content. Um, what I've actually had done in here is I've, I've added those tags and really those tags are a one-to-one -one with the profiles. But there's no reason why we can't actually apply these profile cards to the tags and then just pick the tags on the content and then automatically apply the profiles based on the tags. So really your, your, your taxonomies really are really important and because they're important, you want to really probably profile your content based on those taxonomies. So if we can get that to be done by tags, I think that'd be a really useful feature and something that's gonna be really, I think, easy to, to build into Sitecore as a, a customization and really uh, help the editor or the marketer. So I think that really wraps up the demo. I'm gonna just quickly jump back to the slides um, that we have, and it will kind of carry on. Okay, so, right, let's jump back into the slides. So, so that's the demonstration. So yeah, as, as that question that just came up, where do you start with all of this? So you've got all of these great capabilities within this platform, and you, you have this with many other platforms, but so you, just to cover some of these, so today we've only really talked about um, implicit personalization. You've then got 
explicit, you've then got sort of connected or information they've given you to you, maybe if they've connected through a social channel, you can personalize based on that, you've got engagement automation, um, federated experience manager, um, that, that's another great feature where you can deliver content out to other sites, so you've, and content testing again, that's a really a valuable feature. Yeah, where do you start with that? Really, you need to you need to kind of have a plan for using those capabilities and you know and leveraging them um, to their fullest. So, really, what, what we would recommend, especially maybe around the the personalization, and this is really how I started to put the, the demonstration together with with our team here, is you really need to to start with understanding your users and the people you expect to be visiting to your site, because really, ultimately, you want to build a user centered design. So you want to deliver dig digitally relevant content to the people on your site, but also you need to maybe understand who your users are if you're maybe providing a service or a journey or you're trying to get them to convert or sign up for something on your site. So really the, the user should be at the heart of everything for what you plan, research, design, um, adapt, measure, maybe optimize on your website. And, and really who, so who might our users be? So just very quickly, we, we've been working on this and we, we've looked at all of the different types of users that a university might expect to have. You, you may have different users that you expect. Uh, you may have a subset of these, but really there's lots of different types of users. You may get sort of perspective, clearing students, mature. You may even get staff, press, family. They probably come and want to find out, you know, where their, you know, their child or grandson is, you know, what university they're going to. and what their university life is going to be like and you might want to deliver relevant content to those types of people. So really what you need to do is it's very hard to target all of those people and deliver content and you really need to kind of want to start simple and you want to, to focus on the key users to your site and maybe tie this into what your key objectives are for your, for your university. Um, so that might be attracting prospective students or, I don't know, um, filling and um, clearing places that you have available. So what you want to do is really develop personas for your key users. Um, and we've got an example here which you might develop um, yourselves within your digital team or this might be you develop this with um, your agency. Quite often a design agency might help you to, to develop these personas but really these are developed through through research and really understanding the people who will be visiting your site and these personas kind of kind of build up a picture of the, the, the behaviors and attitudes, maybe the needs and challenges of the people and ultimately the goals that you want those people might have when they come to your site. So you kind of need these in everything you do um, across your, your university to understand, you know, how you're going to build these these websites and um, you know how you're going to use the capabilities in the platform to, to really target these people. So following on from that, what we actually did for the demonstrations, we looked at um, a few key personas and really the characteristics within those personas to uh, understand how what behaviors we wanted to track through the site. So we were actually interested in the, the qualifications that people were interested in, um, subjects, study method, and maybe the study duration. So. Moving on from that, there's within that, there's kind of within those characteristics, we've got sort of um, sort of subjects that so the subjects people are interested in, the study method, whether they're interested in a full-time, part-time course. So these are kind of the things that relate to the persona, and then we can actually then build up the profile of those people. And this is ultimately what I just walked through in cycle. We showed you how we built up those those profiles in the, the experience platform. Okay. Um, Paul, I think over to you. Yeah, thanks, Adam. That was uh, an excellent um, you know, dash through um, the art of the possible, really, in terms of what a digital experience platform can do in terms of mapping out those journeys, getting personalized content in the moment, personalized content, or personalized content based upon people's previous behavior, and having the opportunity to test what personalized content is working and what isn't working so you can optimize it. And then, then, of course, when you apply these techniques and practices um, to your digital properties, you, you get, you do get improvements in performance. In other words, you get more conversions. You provide your students or prospective students with a much better experience with content which is explicit to their particular needs and what you know about them according to their, their demographics and their psychographics, um, which means that they are able to self-serve that much better and make decisions that much 
better, particularly through times such as um, periods such as clearing, where there's a lot of pressure on you guys to be able to respond to people's questions quickly. They can self-serve. Then you'll get more convergence, and there's less burden on your your help desks and support desks in the process of doing that. And then, of course, Adam was able to show this ongoing engagement plan because the conversation doesn't stop there, does it? When some it comes to your, your website or your mobile site, it's about then triggering off this iterative ongoing conversation which is relevant to their specific interests and the courses that they want to attend and um, other topics perhaps about finance and accommodation, all these sort of things. So you can, you can trigger this off to make sure you've got this dialogue going so because if people are applying for a master's degree. It's not a decision they make in a moment. It's something that is a considered decision, isn't it? So therefore, you want to give them the information over a period of time to support them and nurture them, and convert them, um, and to provide them with a great, great experience. And this actually follows on when they they do join up with and sign up with your university as well. And the one point, um, and I'll come to the slide in a moment. The other point I'd make is that we had a question about how much time is involved in in doing things like personalization. And getting the right content there. When you've got a company like EduServe um, available for you, who are really experienced in doing this, they've done this a number of times, and you can see they put that mock-up website together in a matter of days. They can set this up for you. Um, we focus on quick wins. You know, where focus on a particular audience, a particular persona, a particular target market. Um, and the thing is that once you get to grips with it, it's very easy to personalise your content and to have lots of personalisation. Um, journeys um, created on an ongoing basis over the year. Um, this previously was uh, you know, difficult to do. It was technically difficult to do. You needed to go into an HTML and really start doing some programming to personalize any content. So it was almost technically impossible and certainly not very financially feasible. But of course, with technology that you've just seen Adam present, it is technically feasible and it is financially viable. So the amount of time is, is minimal once you've got the things set up with uh, EduServe and the profiles and patterns are set up and you've mapped out customer journeys. Um, and therefore, you know, you don't need legions of staff, you don't need to actually employ lots of more people to be able to do this, you can do it yourself. It's very intuitive. Um, and the question really, if I may turn the question around from how much time does it take, I think the other question is how much return on investment am I going to get from doing this? And so working with higher education establishments around the world, we've seen just by people doing simple personalization for a particular persona or a particular journey or a particular market segment, maybe attracting international students from a particular geography, the conversion rate goes up by doing simple personalization for maybe only 10 or 15% of your content. The conversion rate goes up by about 12%. So if you've got you know, hundreds of thousands of people coming to your digital properties, then you can increase a conversion, whatever that conversion may be, by 6 12%. That has a direct correlation to income to your university. And actually, we've got an ROI calculator that we use to do that, which is based upon research done by external analysts like Forrester and Gartner. So we can. So I'm very happy with, with um, EduServe to, to work with you on this return on investment about if you do these apply these principles such as testing and personalization and mapping out these journeys, what the return on investment is likely to be. So uh, I do this all the time with organizations now because attribution is something which is now not an elusive discipline um, with digital because everybody's got a digital fingerprint. You can track, trace, monitor it, and therefore you can measure it. So how much time is a good question about how much money can we make? You know, how, can we, how much money can we save as well um, is, are also good questions to ask. So looking at the slide, just by wrapping up, um, and we're in good time actually. Um, so why is a plan important? Well, we know if you don't have a plan to succeed, you're going to plan to fail. And I think Adam's uh, already allude, alluded to what the plan would be, is setting out a specific goal that you want to achieve, which may be, right, let's target on this particular, these particular courses that you want to attract students to. Maybe you've got new courses that you want to promote. And maybe this particular um, caliber of student that you want to you want to attract maybe high-performing students or per, um, students from uh, underprivileged backgrounds, whatever it may be. But you need that sort of simple high-level plan about who you want to attract and then map out that, that user journey and that's what we're going to be doing, as you, will, as you said, we'll be doing with you in terms of mapping out those journeys and how you then correlate the CRM information, the transactional hard data in your CRM systems with the unstructured data or, or digital data so you start to get up that single view of your students.
um, and taking on their taking on um, additional channels, taking this content you've got and personalizing it across your social channels as well. So social integration, very simple to do with Sitecore um, and so on and so forth. So we've got those other things in there as well. So by way of an offer to take this forward, um, and this, take, this kind of works really well. EduServe and ourselves are very happy to offer you an opportunity to do a simple work or just have a conversation, or maybe sometimes um, you know, a full-blown workshop. It's really up to you as to how far you want to take this. But initially, you need to think about what are the possibilities of what you've just seen and more. Um, how does it apply to your particular um, establishment, your institution? And where, can, where would the return investment be? And where do you focus on first? And what would the plan look like? Um, so it's about making the possibilities. What are the possibilities? and then how do we make the possibilities a reality? Um, what's involved in implementing it? What's the return on investment? And what's the next step? Where are the quick wins? So those are the kind of workshops that we offer to you guys and um, they seem to work really well. Um, and now, you know, I, I, I throw down the gauntlet and say, guys, you know, please do get back in touch with, the, uh, with us, with Steve and uh, myself and other people in EduServe and take us up on this offer because uh, this is the way to go and we are doing it with other universities and we've got some great success stories that you would have seen from the um, other webinars that I've run with people like Roman University and um, so on and so forth around the world. Um, I'm trying to remember the names of other, um, what's the name of that university? Higher education establishments here in the UK as well have started to apply this and started to get some real results. And also what we can do by just way of rounding this off now is to is give you an opportunity to learn from other sectors who really are further down the line in terms of applying these disciplines um, and people like the fast moving consumer goods or the tourist industry. There's some correlations in terms of what the tourist industry does to your, in your industry as well. Um, and so, um, you know, it's not just about learning from what other higher education establishments are already doing. It's also about learning from um, best practices and market leaders in other industries, so we do that with you as well. So that's me. I, I finished up. I have no more to say. Adam, have you got anything else to round up with, or are you done? I think just before, because there's one or two questions, I, I, just to add to that, Paul, I think, yeah, so we're, we're planning to run yeah. some future webinars, and it'd be, um, so we, we've got a list there that we're hoping to cut, go through, so like user journey insight optimization, that's all about engagement automation. Again, CRM integration, that's always, you know, that always comes up whenever speaking to universities, that's, that's quite key. And it might be that it's not just one system that they want to integrate with, and also we need to think about bi-directional flow of data as well. Um, and also there's some other technologies we've been working with here, particularly Caveo, which is re a really good um, uh, complement cycle and works very well with it. So we didn't quite have time to fit into our demonstration today, and we'd like to follow up again, but you can... Um, boost results um, based on the profile that um, that you built for that particular person on on a on a visit to the site. So what I could have actually done is maybe boosted the computer science degrees when I went to the listing page because I built up that profile. Again, we're looking at intelligence, so I, I'm sure community is very important. Um, you know, to create communities um, for for your um, uh, your students who attend and intelligent again is another good technology which integrates very well with Sitecore. And something that we we feel is really important as well is the the architecture of governance. So really making sure that you've you've got a good plan for all of the technologies you want to use and it's really aligned with the business. Um, on occasions we do find, you know, <clears throat> some organisations we work with. They might have a fragmented or maybe a Frankenstein architecture where there's lots of different systems that have jumped up and or people are trying to integrate and that really comes from having different silos with no control over the technologies that are interested in for maybe some tactical pieces of work when really you need to kind of have a some kind of governance control over that. And quite often IT teams will see these issues but maybe they don't have maybe the, I don't know, the authority to maybe control and maybe review and give feedback on that. So that's quite important and we were thinking about maybe so maybe a session on that as well. But I think maybe we can move on to questions now. If there are yeah, well, well one, one question that's come in, I think Paul, you might be best placed to answer this, is it's around how can non-technical staff work with uh, technical staff? Is there any kind of template that they can work through uh, to collaborate on to, to kind of get this process moving, I suppose? 
Yeah, that's a great question because um, you know to get this process moving, really, you need to get consensus. You need your your di different teams, technical teams, and your marketing teams to collaborate together. And the technology IT team people need to understand what the marketers are, do, are trying to do, and the marketers need to understand what's involved with the technology, um, as um, Adam's already referred to in terms of you know integration to CRM, as an example. My, my answer to that question, what works really well, is to run one of these workshops. Um, is to get the, tech, the IT team together with the marketing team and any other stakeholders who may be interested in this, who have a you know, responsibility for making this happen, and to work out what your plan is and what you're trying to do, so your your IT team really understand the value and the return on investment you're going to get from doing things like personalization um, and mapping out these customer journeys. So they get the right context in terms of what you're trying to do, and then they can work with you and people like EduServe to knit together the right technology to be able to deliver against the plan. But you start off with the plan and get consensus between the various people who are involved in delivering it, technical people and marketing people, and that works. And I have a, I do have a, not like a template, but I do have a high-level overview of how you can correlate the technology to marketing goals and overall um, operational objectives. So, yeah, this is something we do all the time. Great question. Thank you for that. Were there any other questions there? I think there were, weren't there? There are a few, but I think there was, there was a good question around... Um, Opting out um, for things like GOIP and other things, how who's in control of that? I suppose can you stop things happening? Can you stop people who don't want to be, I guess, who don't want to be tracked, to be tracked? I think part of that's around. Adam, do you want to um, yeah, so I think that's maybe a, like a privacy thing, where I guess where people don't want, you know, they're worried about you know people's yeah. privacy and you know people. Don't want to be targeted and you know fed ads. So like maybe if you go to Amazon, you've you've bought you know a, a toy car for a friend or you know a daughter or something like that, and then you go back and then you're being shown the same thing, and it's very forced. But really, it's not forced personalization. You're really trying to deliver relevant things that are really going to help um, you know people on the, those journeys. I think. Yeah, um, and a lot of a lot of stuff's controlled from from universities. Well. So if you if if you don't want to if you want to have the ability for people to opt out to stuff, we want saving cookies and stuff, that's, that's up to you. And then it's always down to what you want to do as an organization with the data that's available to you, what you do collect and what you don't collect, and what you're comfortable with as an organization. Yeah, I mean, this question always comes up with personalization, doesn't it? Is it, is it cool or scary? In fact, you know, we've got a whole presentation on the topic. Um, and I, the opt-in, you know, if, if it's open and transparent and people know what you're doing, then I don't believe that to be an issue, um, and we've seen many examples from other organisations in different industries where they're open and transparent about people opting in, they're giving people that option always, um, so there's nothing divisive about it. Um, and at the end of the day, you know, the, the customers, the consumers, the students in your case, um, stand to benefit from getting be a better experience from getting personalised content. So in other words, it's a win-win situation. It's not it's not a covert operation in terms of harvesting information about people just so you get to target them with um, you know, kind of subversive information. That's not what this is about. This is about giving them a better experience and, and giving them the opportunity to self-serve and understand what you're offering in, in a quicker, real-time, dynamic way. So yeah, is it cool or scary? I, I think on, on balance, it's definitely uh, definitely cool, but you need to get over that. Good it's point. quite interesting. Good question. I think just a bit more, bit more on that. You've um, a bit more context around that. So this kind of example that someone's asking is, um, so around GOIP, for example, there could be uh, U.S. nationals living in living in the Middle East, and so they want, wouldn't necessarily want it to be uh, personalised on some sort of GOIP. And I think you could probably use a combination of GYP and other kind of pattern cards to identify who they are and what they're looking at and you wouldn't have to just rely on where they're coming from you rely on a mixture of a mixture of a few things to get a build up that big picture of who they are yes absolutely and no, um, remember you know people are coming in from um, uh, you know they're more na one nationality but they're coming in from the Middle East they're American but they're actually logging in from uh, a place in the Middle East it, Whilst, whilst we don't know who they are, therefore, um, uh, what we do know is what their behaviour is in the moment. So it's that in the moment personalisation 
uh, rather than historical personal, um, personalization based upon historical transactions and interactions. So it's that in, implied, implicit personalization that still works in that context. So any more questions? Uh, not so much questions, it was stuff uh, that people might like to see. Um, it would be great to see some functionality of the experience profile in more detail with regard to automation and furthermore any possibility of having uh, cross-device data, helping with cross-device data. Yeah, so I think that's a, definitely a good webinar that we could pair and definitely deliver if, it, if there's interest in that and that's something we were hoping to, to to do at some point. So yeah, I think that's that would be a good one to cover. I think, and uh, I think you know, the, the maybe the last one was around any good examples of university sites or industries that are using personalization that might be helpful. I wonder if that would be useful for something for us to send out off the bat of this. Yeah, definitely, I can do that, and I'm sure I can do. Uh, as you say, I've got some examples as well. I, I, you know, I've just been dealing with. Um, this is a bit of a curveball, but I've just been dealing with the um, automotive dealership market a lot. Um, and so, uh, you know, what they were really keen on learning uh, was not necessarily how, how other dealerships were working and how they were using personalization and what best practices are, were working. Uh, because if, if they, all they do is look at what their competitors are doing, all they can do or hope to achieve is to be as good as their competitors. What they wanted to do was to learn from other industries who are further down the line in terms of the adoption of these practices. So we've got some great examples. Um, and one example I gave to um, an auto dealership uh, company the other day called Lookers, as it happens, and I presented to um, 400 of their after-sales team, and I gave them an, an example of um, proper omni-channel marketing example of digital interaction across that whole journey with a company called Nutritia. Um, do you know Nutritia? And it was um, baby milk powder, and it's a full omni-channel personalized experience, offline and online, multi-device, um, and the whole story was it. It takes 10 minutes to explain and um, that's what they wanted to learn from, to apply those those approaches that other organizations and other industries have already proven out um, and to learn from rather than learn from uh, um, their competitors because that doesn't differentiate them. However, of course, those people who have attended previous webinars would have seen me present examples of other higher edu education establishments who have already um, adopted this approach. So yeah, universities and Colleges are already doing this to some extent and uh, rushing at it now because they can see the value of it. Any more, more questions? I think that was uh, I think I was in actually that was most of the ones that we've I think we've covered hopefully everything. Sorry if I've missed it. I think I uh, I think I've tried to pick out everything. Yep, I think that's it. Great. Well, thank you. Shall I just wrap up by saying thank you very much and every uh, everybody for participating in this and that's the let. It's the engagement continue. That's all I can say. Carry on having that dialogue with us. Thank you very much indeed. And that's bye from me. Cheerio. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks. Bye then. Thank you.